We're speaking today with Filippo Mancha. He's the assistant professor at Columbia University Medical Center. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now you are uh, speaking at the new and notable symposium. You're one of seven speakers, so a lot of ground to cover. Tell us what you're specifically talking about. So um, I'm a structural biology, uh, uh, biologist at Columbia University, and I come as, as training, I'm a, an x-ray crystallographer. Uh, while what I'll be talking to you about is um, a structure that we've just determined using cryo-electron microscopy. So this is a structure we've been working on for quite a, pro a problem, a biological problem, which is how a hydrophobic molecule such as vitamin A traverses the membrane in a specific uh, transporter-mediated fashion. And we have um, been able to uh, determine the structure of the receptor for the carrier for this protein, which is called retinal binding protein, and uh, we unveil, I'll be unveiling at the uh, New Notable Symposium um, the structure, how we got to it, and what this structure means in terms of the function of the protein. And this is, in a way, the most fascinating aspect of this research, is that we now have a tool to study how this transport system, which is unprecedented, works. And I'm extremely excited about that. Yeah, and uh, you'll be unveiling all of that here at the symposium. So what I'll be unveiling um, tomorrow is what has led us to determine this structure of this unique transporter. I will, um, show, I will show the audience what the, how we did it and what the protein looks like, how it is similar or different, and what are the surprises that an atomic model give us, gives us of, um, of the protein. What I will not tell you is how the protein works. I will leave it, that will be the, the next round of this, of this research. And I think um, I'm looking forward to posing the questions, not necessarily providing the answers. And that I think fits into a new, new and notable symposium. It's fresh, it, it's fresh research. Right, and yeah. in light of that then, where do you see this research in five years? So I think what we have, what we have, what my lab has done is really the step number one. And um, it brings together, having a view, an atomic view of the molecule, brings together a decade of functional work done on this, uh, performed on this. Now what we have to do is to bring the two together even more and pose structure-based functional hypotheses and test them. Now this is a quite, a, quite I think, in my, in my view, this is a quite a, uh, a complex transport system. Uh, there's, uh, as, you say, as I said, a transfer of a hydrophobic ligand across the membrane. There is a carrier for the ligand both on the outside and on the inside of the cell since the hydrophobic ligand can't just free float in an aqueous solution. And there are also data suggesting that the whole system has a signaling effect, i.e. that the transfer of the hydrophobic ligand triggers, um, triggers a, a cellular response. So how that works, understanding how this all, all fits together is going to take some time. From my perspective of my lab as a structural biologist, what we will aim at doing next is to see um, what, uh, what, is to make, is, uh, what we will do is to make complexes. Um, first step is to make, as I, as I said, as a structural biologist, is to make complex with the outer extracellular and intracellular ligands and try to trap the molecule during its transport cycle. So how do you see the field of structural biology in the next five years? Well, I think this is a really an exciting moment for structural biologists, biology. Um, up to now, up to a couple of years ago, if you wanted to obtain an atomic level uh, uh, description of a biological molecule, of a protein, the, the, the really only field, and I, um, which the only technique that could really do this was X-ray crystallography. X-ray crystallography is fantastic and there have been fan incredible advances in terms of synchrotron radiation and, um, and even our, our capability of, making, of, of preparing samples. However, X-ray crystallography depends on having the, your protein of interest form a crystal. And this is much, uh, uh, it's, it's a lot uh, hit or miss. A lot of proteins just don't want to crystallize. And now, with the advent of direct detectors on um, electron, cryo-electron microscopy has taken a leap forward and has almost, so is going to pair itself with X-ray crystall crystallography. So what this means is that the moment you have a, a well-characterized protein biochemically, almost any 
problem can be tra can be can be tractable at this at the atomic and can yield atomic level information. And so this is a game changer. Um, and over the next five years, I expect the number of structures, the wealth of structural of structural information, to to actually flood the community. And to me, this is extremely exciting. Sounds like a lot of very exciting research. Uh, Filippo Mancha, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.